emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, and welcome to part three of our build of the Meng Warship Builder Type 7 U boat, little chibi spud boat, for my very good friends and sponsors over at emodels.co.uk, your one stop shop for all your model making needs. Now, if you remember in the last episode, I passed not only kittens but also bullets trying to get this antenna wiring sorted out. And we did in the end. After the cameras had stopped rolling, I went ahead and adjusted this one at the front a bit. I sort of cut it and stretched it further and tried to get it more in the middle. And I also added some extra CA glue to the isolators that I made out of blobs of CA glue. Just try and round them off a little bit. But that's now all done. The wiring is on there. With that done, that completes the building part of this project. Apart from obviously these little bits here, which I need to glue on. So the next step is to get it painted. Now, here we go. Lesson number one. If you the first time you've watched me do anything, I will impart to you my lifelong lesson. Whenever you want to paint a model, there is one golden rule you must always do. Always, 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 always prime your model first before you put any paint on it. People often ask me, do I need to prime this model? If I'm doing this model, do I need to prime it? If I'm painting this, do I need to prime it? The answer is always yes. If you're putting paint on a model, paint is not designed to stick to plastic. Paint will not stick to plastic very well at all. It will just easily be rubbed off, scraped off, chipped off. If I just painted this now and then handled it a little bit, the paint will just come off. It's got nothing to stick to because this is smooth, shiny plastic. The rule is you always apply a primer coat first. Primer through various different methods will bond to the plastic one way or the other and it will grip. And then when you apply the paint on top of the primer, the paint can grip to the primer and then it's not going to come off with handling. So you must always prepare the, the surface for the paint by adding a coat of primer first. Now, although this is an airbrush free build, and I've said that right from the start, for this bit, I am going to have to use an airbrush. Uh, now, it's purely because the weather outside is terrible. It's too wet and dismal and horrible for me to go outside with a rattle can of primer. So I'm going to have to use an airbrush primer. Now, don't panic if you don't have an airbrush and you're not actually planning on doing any airbrushing on this build. If you are, continue to watch for the next five or ten minutes because I'll show you how I do it with an airbrush. But if you've not got an airbrush, don't panic. Just kind of skip this step. Get yourself a rattle can of primer. The Army Painter stuff is very good. The Tamiya uh, rattle can primers are excellent. Go and get yourself a rattle can of primer and when the weather's nice and it's not windy or raining or wet, take your model outside and rattle can it with primer. But I'm going to use the airbrush purely because I have to use the airbrush now because the weather's terrible. I can't go outside. So what am I going to prime with? Well, I'm going to be using my favourite airbrush primer, which is the Ultimate Primer, Ultimate Modelling Products Primer. It's the same stuff as uh, Badger Stan Al Res, and it's the same stuff as the Ammo by MIG uh, One Shot Primer. They're all the same thing, just different labels. I've got the Ultimate stuff. These are really, really nice. They're dead simple to use. If you have got an airbrush, even though this is an airbrush free build, if you want to rack it out, I'll show you how to apply this really nicely. But like I say, I'm going to be using this. If you haven't got an airbrush, don't panic. Get yourself a rattle can of primer. Go outside on a nice day and spray the model first. Spray it from about 30 centimeters away. Keep the can moving all the time. And when you press the nozzle on the can, pretend this was a can of rattle can of primer. You press the nozzle to spray it. Press it when it's not pointing at the model, like that. So you press it away. You'd pan it across the model and you'd let go of the trigger and then you'd move it back again. You'd keep moving it backwards and forwards. Never press the nozzle when it's pointing at the model because you'll get blobs of paint and keep it about 30 centimeters away and keep it moving all the time. Build it up slowly. Anyway, I'll get the airbrush out and we'll crack on in the spray booth. Okay, so here we are in the spray booth. Like I said, I'm gonna be using my ultimate primer. This is just the normal matte black. I love this stuff because it's idiot proof and because of that, I can use it. I'm also using my Iwata Revolution 0.5mm nozzle airbrush. Now if you know me, you know normally that I use a Trigger Iwata Neo. It's a trigger instead of a button on the top. That's purely because my old man hands, I can't use a button airbrush for more than 5 or 10 minutes without cramping and discomfort. A trigger brush is much better for me. However, because this is a big thick primer coat, 
this airbrush is absolutely solvent safe so I can just pour gallons and gallons of isopropyl alcohol into this airbrush and it won't do any harm which means that when I finish doing this primer coat I can just do that and have it clean and nice and shiny within five minutes whereas with the Neo it takes me a bit longer and I've got to be more careful it's only a 0.35 nozzle but it's not so bad but this just makes it quicker so I will use this airbrush purely because of speed now the trick with any primer is don't thin it you can see here I'm just putting it neat into the airbrush and the special technique I use is to move the bottle so I dribble it down the back of the cup because I'm a spoon if you can do that it makes things better now what I'm doing here I'm laying on a very thin mist key coat it's a very thin misty coat and it's purely designed to get some very slight layer of primer on the surface before we do the proper thick coats of layer later the reason you have to do this if you just put primer straight on the plastic you may get a kind of marbled weird effect because it will affect the surface tension because even primer has a little bit of a challenge to stick to bare plastic so whenever you're applying any kind of primer or any kind of paint or anything that you're spraying on a surface do a thin almost imperceptible misty key coat first then go over it with some air like I did just there from just air from the airbrush that was just to flash it off and dry it out and now I'm going over with my proper thicker heavier coats of primer now the beauty with the UMP stuff is that like I said use it neat you don't thin it you never ever thin primers put it through your airbrush depending on the airbrush you're looking at about 20 to 25 psi because it's quite thick but what makes this particular primer, the UMP or the Ammo or the Steinar Res primer, so special is that you can literally, what can you do, Ted? Clap it on. Exactly. You can carelessly put this on. Once you've done your key coat to get some grip, you can carelessly spray this on. Even go a bit too heavy, heavier than you normally would. It's very, very forgiving. It will self-level beautifully and you won't lose any detail. I don't recommend you do go in, you know, hell for leather and just blap it all over. It's just if you do, it's going to forgive you for it. You can see here I'm not quite slapping on a massive thick layer, but I'm not going gently. I'm just putting it all over. So all I'm doing now is I'm just going around. I'm going to prime the whole U-boat, then let that dry for five or ten minutes so it's touchable, just ever so slightly touchable. And then I'll go back and I'll do the base as well because uh, I want to make sure the base is primed. Now remember... Remember, like I said, if you don't have an airbrush, don't panic. You can do this with a rattle can. Like I said earlier on there, just make sure you're 30 centimeters away. Keep the rattle can moving all the time and don't press the nozzle when it's pointing at the model and you should be able to get a nice primer coat. Now I am using a black primer here. Doesn't really matter what color you use, although some of the techniques I'm gonna use later on will benefit from it being a black primer coat. Okay, and I've left that for 24 hours to fully cure. Now, you don't actually have to leave it for 24 hours. This stuff is ever paintable in an hour. It doesn't take long at all to dry and cure. But I've left it for 24 hours because it was late at night and I had to stop anyway. So it's had 24 hours, and as you can see, it's looking a bit spanky. This is why I love the uh, this primer, the UMP slash ammo slash Steinar Res. It's just so forgiving. You could go crazy with this stuff and slap it all over and it would still look this good. It wouldn't obscure details. So just as an advisor, when you are looking at a primer, you want to make sure it does two things. One, you want to make sure it's very forgiving. You don't want it to clog up and obscure any little tiny recesses or anything like that. That's the key thing. It's got to be there for the paint to grip to, but it can't change the way the model looks. And secondly, I didn't mention this before, but it does need to ideally be sandable. If you were, say, filling a seam, you'd you'd fill the seam you'd prime it to see if it looks all right you might have to go back and do a bit of sanding and a bit more filling then you prime it again you'd check it you do a bit more sanding this primer is sandable i could sand this down and it would be a nice smooth feathered edge some primers when you sand them they just peel off or they flake off and you get a solid jagged edge that's a nightmare so it's sandable and it goes on really well and it's super forgiving so if you're looking for a decent primer if i remember rightly all three of these might be in stock at least one of them will be in stock it's either ump ultimate primer badger Steinal res or ammo by mig one shot primer they're all the same thing just different labels so if you want a good primer check out one of those for you in the store now it's time to actually get some work done and i'm going to show you quickly what we're going to be using now we are going to be using some water-based acrylic paints now remember this is a this is kind of designed at absolute beginners so there are other paints you can brush paint you can brush paint lacquers and things like that but i'm going to keep things simple lacquer paints are highly toxic and a bit more tricky to use and not really beginner paints so we're going to keep things simple we're using water-based acrylics uh, and i'm going to be using three different brands well two different brands three different 
and get this right two different ranges from three yeah i'm going to be using these not exclusively just these ones i might use some extra ones here and there as i need them but this is what i think i'm going to need to start with we've basically got some uh, different shades of grays we've got some metallics and some whites and browns and we've got a couple of washes uh, we've got paints from the vallejo game color range which are beautiful to brush paint we've got some from the vallejo model color range which are a bit thicker a bit more opaque uh, actually got the wrong way around these are more opaque the game color than the model color but again these are beautiful to brush uh, this is an older range the model color is an older range than the game color we also have some of the ammo by big metal acrylics uh, we have gold bronze and a copper uh, now also i've got an ink and a wash we've got the vallejo game ink uh, black and we've got the vallejo game color wash which is sepia shade now if you know me you know i like to do my warhammer builds bigger, bigger and i love using citadel shades so we're going to do some similar things with these we're going to make our own shades now you can make shades with a number of different things but i'm going to be using a glaze medium i haven't unfortunately i haven't got it out here because i can't find it. i've got to try and find it i can't find it i'm like oh uh, but i've got some of the vallejo glaze medium so i'm going to be using that to dilute my my washes and shades and we'll cover all that as we go along and i will call out the paints as we go along uh, when i use them so you know what i'm going to use we might use a bit more than this i don't know yet and we'll we'll see how it goes I'm probably going to need a green because I like to do some some scum line work or some algae or something like that. But I haven't planned that far ahead yet. So as far as I know, these are initially the colours I'm going to use. There is possibly one Citadel paint I'm going to have to use. And that's a verdigris colour paint, which I don't think anyone else does. Not that, I re not that I'm aware of. So I may have to use one Citadel paint. Sadly, models don't stock the Citadel stuff yet at this time. But, you know, we'll get there. So anyway, I'm going to put these paints to one side. You can see I've got the scruffy painting mat down. So let me put all these paints to one side and we'll crack on with the painting. Yes. Now, before we get going, let me explain what this plastic tray is. This is my wet palette because we're going to be using acrylic paints, water-based acrylic paints. And I always use a wet palette with those. Now, don't panic. You don't have to. If you want to just use, you know, a plastic tub lid or a plate or a... Yeah, glass tile or something like that ceramic tile you can you can use a dry palette it's nothing wrong with that at all but just remember when you paint your model if you're brush painting don't ever take paint straight from the pot or straight from the dry palette and put it on your model it'll be thick and stodgy and you'll get brush marks and it won't be an even coat you always want to add a little tiny bit of water to your paint before you put it on the model just to get the smoothest finish possible now if you're using a wet palette like me uh, instead this is a palette that's designed to keep the paint moist this is a uh, tissue and parchment paper and it's moist to the touch and it keeps this paint hydrated and means that i don't have to add any water to this because there's enough moisture in this palette to make this paint just thin enough and perfect for brushing it doesn't apply to every single water-based paint if you're using vallejo air they're actually thin enough you don't need to use a wet palette but for these others, I always use a wet palette. It just makes life easier, especially when you're mixing and blending colours. So if you can, I've got a guide here. Click here at the top once you finish watching this video, obviously. And it'll explain what wet palette is in more detail and how you can make one for literally a few quid. But if you don't want to, if you can't, don't panic. You can just use a normal dry palette, a normal piece of whatever you want to use. Just make sure you add the tiniest, tiniest amount of water to the paint every time you brush, just to thin it down. Now you might notice that we're starting with a brown. Why is that? Well, that's purely because we're going to paint the decking first. And that's purely because if we paint the whole hull first and then we try and paint the decking, most likely we'll end up getting paint all over the hull that we've already painted. And then it'll be a pain to try and get that back in if we started all the weathering. So what we're going to do, we're going to paint the decking first so we can not worry about where we're getting paint on the rest of the hull. Once the decking is complete, we can then paint the rest of the hull carefully and it's going to be easier to avoid getting paint on the painted deck than it is to avoid getting deck colour on the painted hull. You have to kind of think logically in the order of painting of what's going to be easiest for you to do the deck first because we have some dry brushing and stuff to do. That's going to be easier. So we're going to do the deck first. Now on U-Boat, the deck from here to here was the normal steel deck coated with, well, it was covered with wooden slats. Those wooden slats were covered in a uh, protective coating, which was black. That was to protect it from the seawater and help prevent organic life, you know, more, uh, man is a moss then. <laughs> you don't tend to get moss at sea, you know, ferns and moss at sea. No, it's not ferns growing on it. Uh, it was to prevent algae buildup on the deck and keep it not slippy. Yeah, it didn't always work. By the time it got back to port, when it left harbour, it was obviously black, but by the time it got back, this was often worn away where there was lots of foot traffic and you'd have the wooden colours underneath. So we're going to simulate that, and we're going to start off by just doing the wood colour itself. So I'm starting off with the Game Colour Desert Yellow, and we're going to just get a coat on here. So if you remember, I've got my wet palette here, which is just moist enough. Now the trick is, whenever you're painting, 
Like I said, you want the paint to be a little bit thin, so a tiny bit of water or from a wet palette as it is now, and use a brush that's bigger than you think you need. Don't use a tiny little detail brush for this. I'm using, this is a Citadel base brush, but any kind of medium sized brush will do. Because when you're painting an area, you want to use the biggest possible brush you can to feasibly paint that area, just to get the smoothest finish and the least brush marks. So I'm just gonna go around, and it's quite tricky. I've got to avoid getting paint. Well, I don't have to avoid getting paint anywhere. I can get paint wherever I want. It doesn't matter, it'd have to be neat at this stage, but I need to avoid knocking into the antenna cables, is what I was about to say, because I don't want to damage those. So when you're painting this, Keep, if you can, try and keep your brush strokes in one direction and just get a nice smooth coat. Now it's going to take more than one coat. As you can see here, the paint is kind of translucent. That's fine. It will take more than one coat. So don't worry too much. If your first coat comes out sort of streaky like this, that's fine. Okay, so that's the first coat, and doesn't that look pretty awful? First coat of desert yellow. Yep, looks pretty minging. Don't panic, that's where the second coat comes in. This is what a first coat, if you thin your paint ever so slightly, this is what paint looks like, especially over black primer. Black primer is quite hard to paint over because most paints are slightly transparent. So don't panic, just go in with your second coat. Uh, and I'm gonna get a little bit of water on the brush, just a little bit, because my paint's getting a bit thin on the wet palette. I'm just going to go over, same again, exactly what I did before. Now, don't panic, like I say, if it looks streaky. It may take two coats, it might take three coats, depending on how thin you have the paint. It's not the end of the world. Just keep going. It's always much better to have multiple thin coats of paint building up the colour slowly than it is to just blap on thick, stodgy paint and obscure all the little tiny details in the decking. That's what you want to avoid. So just go along slowly build it up. Okay, so there you go, that's three coats of the desert yellow. Now you can see it's still a little bit patchy here and there. There are some areas like these hatches where it's not really covered at all, but that's fine, I've not bothered with them. They're gonna be hull colored because they're bits of metal. Uh, but even on the woody areas, you can see here like around the back, there's still some little bits of patchiness where you can see a hint of the, the dark primer showing through a little bit, that's fine. Wood is all different colors. It's not just a flat brown color. So we want some natural variation. And what we're gonna do next is actually gonna build on that even more because next we're gonna do a wash. Uh, now we're going to do a wash with the sepia shade now you can just use this stuff neat you can just get it straight out of the bottle get it on your palette uh, and put it all over i wouldn't recommend using a wet palette for this because this is you don't really want to thin it with water and we're not going to thin this with water at all we're going to dilute it with glaze medium now if i was just to use this straight from the bottle and paint it all over it would settle in the recesses but it would darken the whole thing down quite a lot and i don't really want that i want it to darken it and be a bit patchy in places but not a lot so i'm going to dilute it down with the glaze medium you could just thin this with water and that would be absolutely fine but what you find is it would change the way it behaves it would change it the way its surface tension works and the way the pigment binds together and it would get lots of watermarks and patches and things i don't want that what i'm going to use is the glaze medium because glaze medium is basically acrylic paint without the pigment and by adding glaze medium to a color to a paint you're not thinning it you're not breaking down the structure of the paint you're just simply making more paint to less pigment you're increasing the amount of paint without color to the ratio of the pigment so you're diluting it so it will continue to behave exactly the same way as it did before it's just not quite as bold it's a bit more transparent it's a bit thinner it's what you use to paint with glaze and that's why it's called a glaze medium so I've basically, I'm going to mix up, it probably, I mean, not scientifically, but it'll be a ratio of about four to one, four drops of the glaze medium to one drop of the shade. So I'll go mix that up and we'll get that on here. Okay, I've got that mixed in my palette. So it's just simply a case of getting it all over. So I'm just going to go all over the deck areas. Now I'm not going to be careful. And when you're doing any kind of shade or a wash, they can be called either things, shades and washes, they're all very similar. Uh, whenever you're doing this, it's important to be fairly generous. Now it might go quite dark, but the thing to keep in mind is, I'm not looking at just getting this settling in the recesses. I'm looking at covering the whole thing. Because what I aim to do is not just put this on and leave it. What I'm going to do is put this on to get some depth. Apologies if this goes out of focus while I move it around. I'm putting it on to get some depth, then I'll bring it back again 
by dry brushing the original colour over the top and that will pick out any raised surfaces, any large open areas and you'll get this nice balance between the dark and the light areas. It won't just look flat with a dark wash. I don't want it to actually be this dark so I want to bring it back and we'll show this again later on. I'll show it in a bit more depth when we work on the hull. So don't be afraid to be very generous with this. Just get it all over, get it on there and we'll bring it back. If it's a bit too dark that's fine. We'll bring it back in a moment. Okay so once that sort of wash has dried you can see it's looking a lot darker. It's patchy in places but that's absolutely fine. It's also collected around the edges especially around the little bits here so it gives it some nice depth and that's perfect. Now we've got a few stages we need to do on this decking and the next stage is to bring that back again from being quite so dark. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the same colour we painted it originally which is desert yellow. We're going to bring back the lighter areas and get some variation. Now we're not going to do too much because obviously we're going to cover a lot of this in black to suggest the protective coat of the deck but we're going to have some variation for it shows through. So first thing I'm going to do is dry brush the desert yellow back over the top. Now for this I've got a chisel edge brush you can see here just a bog standard this is an artist a Dale Rowney graduate brush. It's a chisel edged square edge brush which is perfect for dry brushing. Now the trick with dry brushing is to get a tiny amount of paint on the brush. I've got some off the palette here you can see and then what we're going to do is get most of that off on a piece of a piece, a piece of tissue smashing. Outstanding Marine. I turned into Sean Connery. Hello. You want to get, I'll start again. We'll get most of the paint off on the tissue. Even a little bit but not too much and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back over the decking at a flat angle like this and the trick is we want it to be nice and smooth so we're going to do little circular movements and it's going to take a while it's going to be a slow process you've got to go slowly i've got to be careful of the antenna cables but i'm going to keep it at maybe at most a 45 degree angle because i don't want the bristles to go into the recesses like these little slats in the decking and I'm going to go over and just start to bring back lighter colours in areas like around here and areas like the centre of this little panel here. I hope it's on camera. Let me get some more paint because I'm running out. I've got some paint just on my, not on my wet palette. I've got some paint on a piece of card uh, off to one side, a piece of shiny paper that I'm using as a dry palette. So again, I'm just going to get some paint on there. Get most of it off onto the tissue. So there's very little left. And we're going to start working. So again, I'll, I'll do some down here. I'll see if I can get it in the middle here. I've got to go straight down this time, but I can go little circular movements. Oops, trying to avoid the antenna wire. I've got to be very careful. And I'll slowly start to build that up. So if I do around, I've done the middle of that little panel there, and I'll do around the edges like this. And I'll just work my way around and slowly it will start to brighten that up. Just take your time. It's good fun this. You can't go wrong. Okay, and as you can see, it's a very subtle effect. I didn't expect much with that first pass. Very subtle effect. So looking a bit better though, a bit neater. You've got a bit more bright areas. Anyway, the next step is to go in with game color khaki, which is 72061. We're going to do exactly the same. So I've got my little dry brush here. A little bit of the paint. We're going to get it on the tissue. Tissue, tissue, tissue vastly different colour. It's a much cooler colour. Not much brighter but it's a bit. And again we're just going to do exactly the same, get a bit of variation going on. So we're going to go circular areas. We're going to see how this comes out but we are going to focus towards the middle of panels. Not so much around the edges but in the middle of panels to get some highlight areas. And it'll just bring some variation. Okay, so that's that done. You can see it's lightened it up a little bit. It's nothing major. Do keep in mind that your colours you see on telly here when you're watching this aren't quite right for real life. It's a little redder in real life, but we've got a bit of a light patch around all the centre areas here. So now the next step is to do the same again, but we're going to lighten the colour a little bit. We're going to add some of the off-white, which is 72101. We're going to add some of that to the khaki and go for a lighter dry brush on top of that. So it's exactly the same as before. We've got the paint on the brush. Only a little bit. You needed a tiny amount. We're going to get most of it off on the magical tissue of happiness. I should rephrase that. And we're going to dry brush it over the decking again. We are going to focus towards the middle of the panels again. But we're going to try and go even lighter than before 
we just want to give it very light dusting just to give some light areas now a lot of this work will be hidden when we go through the next steps but i'm going to focus this towards areas of high traffic so where there'd be the most footfall and the wood would be exposed under the sort of protective coating or more likely to be exposed so we've got a kind of sandy color we're going to work our way around and just stick to the high foot traffic areas and with that done that's the wood colors done basically for the deck uh, we're pretty much done with those the next step is to recreate the the weatherproofing and the anti uh, algal coating the protective coating that goes on the wood but that's as far as we're going to paint the wood now i know it does look a little bit cartoony but let's just look again at what we're actually building here yeah it's we're not worrying about everything being super realistic we're going to go for reasonably realistic we're going to have some realism in mind but we are going to go for slightly fun silly cartooniness to our colors so it's a bit it's a bit ridiculously over exaggerated it's very stylized but that's fine that's what i'm going for now it is up to you what colors you use for your wooden decking uh, as you can tell i've gone for more sandy earthy tones and that shade we made uh, out of the sepia tint and some glaze medium is kind of just giving it a ready tinge around the edge but it's entirely up to you what colors you use although i would recommend given what we're going to be doing next i would recommend sticking to lighter brown tones don't go too dark you don't want real dark oaky colors because the next step is just going to blend in with all that and you just end up with a really dark colored deck you want to have a contrast between the dark preservative colors which you're going to do and the light woods so exaggerate it to make it stand out so with that done what is the next step the next step is to reproduce like i said the preservative that goes over the wood it's going to cover up most of this work so don't get too attached to yeah don't get too attached to this it's going to cover all this up but we're going to have to get this black tinting now like i said the preservative started off black when it left harbour by the time it got back to port it will be lots of dark gray shades and tones with some of the original decking the wood decking exposed and just being light browns but not much however again this is a cartoon so we're going to exaggerate and stylize so what we're going to do is we're going to use the game ink 72094 black now the difference between this and the shade we made earlier on with the sepia color is the sepia color is basically just a very diluted paint this is ink it's not paint it's ink it's you know like ink you'd put in your pen uh, now this stuff has a very very dense bold pigment all inks do and if i was just to put this all over the model it would just basically be black so i don't want to do that i want to make my own shade if you know me again and my warhammer stuff i love normal we're going to basically make some normal in the same way we took the sepia shade and we mixed that with the glaze medium to dilute it down we're gonna do the same with this a bit more though with the sepia shade the ratio was sort of four drops of glaze medium to one drop of this i used a lot more it's just that's the basic ratio i was using with this it's probably going to be more like i don't know seven or maybe even eight drops of glaze medium to one drop of this this stuff is super bold you don't need much of this at all it really is almost nothing in there twiddle around with it and do some practicing but just you need to dilute this a lot more with glaze medium than you do the normal paints and shades so just keep that in mind so i'm going to go mix that and we'll apply that okay so i've mixed them up and again i don't use a wet palette when i make up a wash or a shade i just use a normal piece of shiny card or something as a palette I, you don't need to thin them any more than you already do so don't use a wet palette for your shades or your whatever you want to call them washes or shades i'm kind of used to saying shade anyway i've got my custom made ink and glaze medium or not normal oil as we'll call it and we're going to do exactly the same as we did when we made the brown wash we're going to get it all over the deck and we're not going to be careful but we're going to do more than one coat so this first coat we're going to put over the whole deck and yes you get a sad face because you're covering up your hard work that you've just done with all the browns don't worry it's all basically part of the fun you're a slave to the pseudo realism and this is the problem when you're doing paint jobs that involve multiple layers you'll often find you'll do a step in a process and you'll be really happy with how it looks and then you'll remember you've got more steps to do and the bit you've just done is going to be mostly covered up and it takes a while to get used to that concept it takes you a while to get happy to do that because it's very easy to think oh but it's just as i want it looks really brilliant now i don't want to change it and make that go away but you have to you have to be able to you know let your babies leave home if you want is the phrase you have to be able to step away and not worry about that it will happen to all of you uh you'll get so used to seeing the step you're on that you'll be resistant to the next step because it covers up all that work don't don't be resistant to any of it it's all good fun
Okay, so that's looking much darker now. Now the next step, once it's dried, is basically to do exactly the same again. You want a second coat. Remember, you have to be brave. There's no room for wusses in this job. So just go in and get yourself a second coat of your black shade, your fake norm oil. Get it all over. Okay, so that's looking a bit darker now. Now we're not anywhere near finished, we've got a lot more to do, but they're all gonna be the same thing basically. We're gonna do lots more coats of our black wash. Now I'm not gonna show every single one because there's no point, it's the same process each time. But what I intend to end up with, hopefully, is the black wash concentrating around the edges of the decking uh, and less where there's heavy footfall. So I want some contrast and some shade between dark areas where there'd be less people walking around and lighter areas where more of the decking colour underneath would show through because it's been worn away. So like here where the deck gun will be, we might have it kind of looking like this or a bit darker, but not much. A bit darker maybe, but still kind of like this. Whereas down here, where you'd have less people walking, or maybe this bit here is going to be darker because there's less foot traffic and less people wearing the preservative off the wood. So it's going to be exactly the same. So I'll get some more of my little fake shade. And what we're doing effectively is kind of a glaze, really. We're using a transparent colour because this is a, it's effectively a glaze. It's, the shade is really kind of glaze. We're using a transparent colour and we're building it up where we want it. So you see here I'm being a bit more selective now. I'm just kind of dotting it on rather than slapping it everywhere, dotting it around the edges. I'm trying to avoid getting it too thick and pooly. So I might get it around here and I'll build it up in areas where I want it to be. And I'm doing like almost like a stipple effect now. So I want it here, but there'll be some foot traffic around the tower. So I'll dab it on the inside of the tower there and do it on camera as well. So I'll dab it around the inside here. I'm not about bothered about getting it on the tower because we're going to repaint that anyway, but I want more where there'll be less foot traffic. So we'll have some here, we'll have some here on this side, same again. We'll go around the around the tower here, we'll build it up. So I'm gonna do a lot more layers of this. It might take, using this sort of stippling technique, it might take three, four, maybe even five more layers of this now to get the outer areas quite dark. So I'm not gonna film every single one, but I am gonna show you the end result. Just do note as well, the alternative to doing this is just dry brushing black. You could also do that if you wanted to. It's an entirely a viable option, um, but I'm gonna do it this way. Because if you've seen me do my Warhammer stuff, using uh, a dark black wash or shade is how I build up the black gun casings on weapons, on you know Space Marine weapons. And I love the way it looks at the end. So that's the particular look that I want. So we shall see how this goes. So I'll go and get all this done. I'll let you know how many coats I end up doing, and then we'll see how it all comes out. and three more coats of that wash later on and the decking is done where i focused it around the edges and less footfall areas you've got more layers of the shade or wash if you prefer and therefore more layers of the ink more layers of the pigment and that's where it's less transparent you can't really see the wood color underneath where you've got less coats maybe only one or two you can see through the ink wash and you can see the wood underneath and that's the effect i was looking for now it does look a little weird i grant you it looks kind of really terrible at the minute that's purely because nothing else has been done yet you'll always get to a stage in a in a build where you're doing the paint job and you get say halfway through or you've painted a certain part of it and the rest is yet to be done we've still got to paint the hole and all the tower and the bits of the decking that are actually hull colored and the you know the fore and aft the stern and the bow it looks terrible right now because nothing else has been done. You'll always get to this point in a build where you'll think to yourself, oh, it looks really bad. I'm, I'm gonna give up and throw it in the bin and go home and have me dinner and oh, I don't wanna touch it anymore. I'm gonna break it into pieces and throw it in the bin. You'll always get to that point on a build, but don't. Don't be tempted to walk away from it. Carry on because it always it comes right in the end. Once we start painting the hull and the bits on the front and the back and the tower and all the details, it'll start to come together and by the end of it we'll have a sweet looking new boat so never get discouraged during a build when you get that halfway through everything looks terrible part of the build because you always get that and you always get past it anyway that's gonna do us thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this episode in the next one we'll crack on with the hall and the rest of the painting we'll get everything maybe we'll get it finished in the next one not sure yet i will be showing you how to do some sort of shading without an airbrush or pre or post shading whichever you prefer 
so stay tuned for that in the meantime if you're liking this build and you want to do one for yourself i'll put a link in the description below but do pop along to emodels.co.uk my very good friends and channel sponsors uh, and pick one up it's a fun little build and i think you're going to love it it's just not hard at all it's really good fun and don't forget of course if you're looking for something and you can't find it on their website don't panic it's either just out of stock in which case give them a call or drop them an email and just say hey guys when will it be back in stock or you know if it's something very specific you want and you can't find it at all it possibly it might be something they don't carry they'll either have something else just as good or if you want to give them a call it's probably something they can get from one of the distributors even though they don't normally stock it so any time you go on the website and you can't find what you want just give them a shout drop them a, an email or give them a phone call or use the contact form on the website they'll always be more than happy to get you sorted out but that's going to do me like i say so thank you so much for watching take care of yourselves go make something awesome go be awesome yes you there you right there looking at me with my finger with all your eye holes go be awesome and until next time adios amoebas i can't wave my fingers too much because i don't want to ding the u-boat I'll, I'll pop the antenna off again i've done that so many times pop the flagpole off